In this week's episode of GarageBand Weekly, we are looking at all things microphones, how to connect them, how to use them, what you should consider when you're using a microphone in your GarageBand projects. We've also got the news and notes, and in our GarageBand Tip of the Week, we're looking at the world instruments. Yeah, they're super cool. Not a lot of folks use them, but I think you should use them more, and we're going to take a deep dive into those here today. All that and a bucket of fish on GarageBand Weekly. GarageBand, GarageBand Weekly, GarageBand. Garage Band Weekly, Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly. Whoa. Whoa, indeed. Welcome to Garage Band Weekly here on Studio Live today for another week. Let's dive in, straight in, because we've got so much stuff to cover here today that I fear we are going to run out of time. And it would be unlike me to go long and go into overtime. So let's get ourselves started with the news and the notes of the week. So the last week within the garage band in the Apple world, it's been a bit of the calm down, the cool down from all the Apple gear. Everyone has the new iPad Airs in their hand. Everyone has the new Mac Studios in their hand. We're all waiting on the WWDC, the Worldwide Developer Conference announcements from Apple to see what is next in the world of Apple hardware. And we haven't really seen much in the way of software apart from uh, iOS 15.4. So I have now updated on all my gear, my iPhone, yes, Froggy here is updated to iOS 15.4. My iPads are all on iPadOS 15.4. It seemed like time to just get everything updated. Thus far, my experience has been fine. Your mileage is always going to vary depending on what you're doing. And my number one tip here is when you get that, number one, turn off automatic no, uh, automatic update. So make sure that you've got that. Go into your settings. It's pretty simple. You go into settings and you go into your general and your update. It's general software update and then automatic updates turn off. It, they're on. They're on here on my phone. As I say that, they're on here on my phone. I'm going to go here and I'm going to say automatic off. Uh, so do that. And then when you are ready to update, go in and do it manually. Because if you're in the middle of a big project, and it's the same with any sort of software update, if you're in the middle of the a big project, then go ahead and stay on the version you're on. Unless there's some sort of major zero-day security flaw where they're going to steal all your information, stay on your current version. Get your project done and then move on to the next one. And uh, yes, as Mark says here, it is 15.4.1. Uh, as I've just noticed... I've just gone into update here, and I won't do it here on the show live, but yes, 15.4.1. And uh, let's see, do they, do they have any uh, notes on this latest update? Let's see. Uh, unlock with face ID while wearing a mic. Well, that was 15.4. Yeah, it doesn't have anything about 15.4.1. It doesn't actually say uh, what are the release updates here. No. Nah. So it must have just been something broke with 15.4. So there you go, 15.4.1. Update your gear. And if anyone has any um, any experiences or has got any tips for the rest of the community, drop them in the chat here or put them in the comments if you're watching on the replay because it's always handy to get insights and information from a bunch of different users. My mileage is going to be different to yours and uh, everyone's experience tends to vary when it comes to this sort of stuff. Uh, the other things, uh, yeah, a few bug fixes, there it goes, um, and just discovered and updated to 15.4.1 on Saturday. Uh, so there's, there's not really much else in the world of Apple, and I'm not going to milk it. I'm not going to try and, you know, make up stuff that doesn't actually need to be talked about. So instead, I'm going to talk about some pretty awesome stuff that's going on around the place. And uh, as I say that, I've lost the link here, but coming up right after this show, and I'm going to super duper try to uh, to be as uh, as on time as possible, so that you can jump over and check out uh, Ron over at uh, I'm just trying to find it here, Ron Indie Music. I had it all set up here, and there's a link in the description and everything. Uh, but uh, here we go. Here is Ron Rockin' Ronnie Ward. Uh, if we bring up the screen, there he is. So go and check out Ron. We've got who've got Jude Capano, we've got Brian Bigler, PJ Kobe, Lithium Vandal. So if you want to see how far, a lot of these folks actually use GarageBand to create their music. So if you're a GarageBander and you want to find out and listen to the great music created by members of the GarageBand community and other communities, we are not completely GarageBand biased around here, then uh, go and check out Rockin' Ronnie Ward. If you're not familiar with Ron Ward, Homegrown Indie Live, do yourself a favor and go check him out. The other thing you may want to check out is uh, Your Music Live. So uh, we have had a time change, and thank you, everyone. I've had feedback from folks. I know that for our UK and European viewers, it is tough because it's now at 1 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time. So I know that we're, we're trialing this for a few weeks just to see how things go. 
I am looking at some other options, one of which is to do a special European version uh, that's going to be at a different time, that's going to be more suitable for our folks over in the UK and Europe. So an, a YML Extra edition, so once a month to, uh, to, to bridge the gap there a little bit. Uh, so that's one option. And then, of course, we can uh, look at changing the time and day in the future. But at the moment, I uh, just needed to do it for, uh, for a few reasons, uh, mainly my uh, mental health for getting up at uh, 5.30 a.m. every Saturday. It's been absolutely delightful to have Friday afternoons and evenings to spend with the family. So that is the, the, the number one reason behind that. But I know and I'm working on solutions because it's not great for our European and uh, and UK friends. Uh, the uh, oh, Sorry, there it is. There's uh, next week's Your Music Live. So if you want to get in early, uh, that's scheduled for the 11th of April, 10th of April, depending where you are in the world. There's a link down in the description or just search Pete John's Your Music Live and you'll find all of the goodies that you want right there. The final thing, and this is um, garage band adjacent. In fact, uh, it's, it's, it's the opposite of garage band. It's me using something different. So for the longest time, a lot of folks have said to me, Johns, you really need to check out BandLab. BandLab is where it's at. BandLab is a online DAW. You can do online mastering. You can do online collaborations with folks. And you can even like import audio that you've created in other platforms like GarageBand and then use some of the online BandLab collaboration features. So what am I doing? Well, guess what? April is Band Lab Month here on Studio Live today. Yeah, the uh, the folks at Band Lab uh, and myself we're working together in the month of April. So we'll be doing a bunch of getting started tutorial videos here on the channel. So if like me you are completely clueless, you're like, "What is Band Lab, Johns?" Well, then uh, you and I are going to find out together. So you can see how how far I am here. You know, zero followers, zero following, zero plays. I've I've set up my account. That's how far I am in with Band Lab. So I've done nothing on here. I've hit the create button and played around. With with it. It's actually kind of cool. It uses, if you've ever used Cakewalk, and there is a version, so don't be confused, there's Cakewalk by BandLab, so that's their desktop DAW. If you want to learn about that, Mike over at Creative Source got you covered there. So there is the desktop version, but this is an online, in your web browser version, as well as mobile, and it's completely cross-platform. It's Android, it's iOS, it's Mac, it's Windows, it is everything. And I need to find out exactly how cool it is. So it was, it was pretty exciting uh, to, to be working with the BandLab folks on these. And if you want to be involved from the start, so if you want to see me learning and see me sort of stumbling as I go, uh, the first couple of videos are going to be live streamed over on Patreon. So if you're not a member of the Patreon channel, it is studiolivetoday.com slash Patreon, and you'll jump over to here. And we've got a live stream kicking off tomorrow where I'll be loading up BandLab. I'll be putting it to the test and we'll be learning it together. So that should be a heap of fun and I invite you to come. For as little as $1 per month, you can join up. I don't care if you join up for the month of April, watch all the band lab stuff and then go away. And if you're not a patron, don't worry, you don't miss out because what we'll be doing is recording all that stuff live and then there'll be some highlights packages and some tutorial videos that will be shared after the fact on the channel. So even if you're not a patron, uh, you will not miss out on what's going on. So that should be uh, that should be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to that. Um, GarageBand is great, and this is GarageBand Weekly, don't forget. But it's important, I think, to uh, at times to just push yourself a little out of your comfort zone, try new things, explore new things. And like I say, BandLab's been on my list of should try things for over probably about two years now, I think. Uh, a lot of people have been mentioning it to me. It's a great collaboration tool as well, so we'll be able to have some fun with some collaborations. So uh, myself, and I'm going to invite some of my Patreon folks to help me out with some of the testing of the collaboration features. And of course... Why is it related to GarageBand? Well, we're going to see if we can master our GarageBand projects in BandLab. That's one option. And if we can import some of our GarageBand stuff or vice versa, because you know what BandLab has? Heaps of loops, heaps of instruments, heaps of samples, heaps of sound. Their guitar sound is way better than GarageBand. So I think we're going to have some fun, even if you are a GarageBand user and you want to just uh, try and dabble in something, you can, uh, help, uh, you can help me learn and we can all learn at the same time. Uh, let's get, let's jump in and say good day to the folks who are here live. Hello, Clayton Von Kluge says, I'm on BandLab, but I'm never there. <laughs> yeah, I'm stoked for you. If you need any help, let me... Oh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, sorry, sorry, that was Mark. Uh, and yes, it's different from the Cakewalk by BandLab, D-A-W. So keep that in mind uh, as well. Uh, by the way, Jay, I, I, sorry, I totally meant to mention this. This is the problem when there's so much going on. I had this in my notes and then I didn't put it in the final version. So uh, let's, uh, let's come here because Jade Star... Uh, 
had a if I search Jade Star iOS files, is it going to bring it up there? Look at that, perfect, great YouTube algorithm uh, setting up there, Jade. So Jade Star did a video today, an updated video. So there was one a year ago about files management, and she's updated it here just today. So let's talk about iOS file management in files and iCloud. So if you want to go on a deep dive, explore with Jade and with the crew there, an hour and a half worth of of content there. And if I know Jade, she's uh, starting to put together these shortened versions, these pre-recorded videos, and I think there'll be one. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jay, but I'm pretty sure you're going to do one in the future that's uh, everything you need to know about the Files app because it can be pretty darn daunting. And managing your files, like the one thing I'll say, whenever I do a video on files here on the channel, people just come from far and wide to tell me that Android is much better and Android supports everything and iOS file management is crap. And I can't disagree with that. I don't know why they're on my channel and watching a GarageBand show or watching an iOS channel, but... I can't argue with that because it is challenging. It is tricky to learn how to actually uh, manage that. Uh, Dan Ekberg sounds uh, sounds cool. Yeah, the band lab stuff should be should be interesting. Uh, question: Do you know if Drum Session appears in your App Store? Can you check Drum Session? Uh, I'm not sure. Drum Session, as in like this. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what one that is, uh, Solrak. So maybe provide a little more info, and we'll get into the Q and A a little bit later. Uh, yes, you can support me on Patreon, Patreon.com/slash Pete Johns, or you can go StudioLiveToday.com/slash Patreon. Uh, g'day, Dave Fox. Yes, have to stay up well late. I know. I apologise, our, uh, our UK and Euro folks. <laughs> oh, oh, too kind, Jay. Jay says I learned everything from you. No, I learned a lot of stuff from you. I learned about downloading things and the iCab mobile browser and a lot of other file stuff from you. And I think I helped you learn about like the zipping up the GarageBand projects and sharing and that sort of thing. So yeah, the, the community helps each other. We all help each other out. That'll be our motto. Uh, yes, Gregory, you do need to go and, uh, and watch that. Uh, let me just see if uh, there's any comments or questions. By the way, if you do have questions and you're here live, feel free to put the word question in front of your question and uh, we'll be happy to attempt to answer it. So that's all you got to do. Question at the start of your comment and I'll try and answer your questions as we go through. But that's the news and notes for the week. Let's crack on, shall we, and talk about our feature topic. Now, as we talk about this I want your uh, your feedback. I'm going to go through a bunch of information and then we're going to have a chat. So if you've got recommendations of microphones that you use, your own experience, your own you know pros and cons and goods and bads and all that sort of stuff, let me know. And look, a lot of this stuff many of you will know, but sometimes it doesn't hurt to get a bit of a refresher and uh, go back and uh, sort of take things one step at a time. And even if there's one thing in this that you learn uh, in all this information I'm about to just dump, then um, yeah, you might be uh, you, you might be good. That's what that's what I do. I like to I like to watch things and, and listen to to stuff that I probably already know, but I'm always going to learn stuff. That's why I watch Patrick over at the GarageBand Guide because even though I know quite a bit about GarageBand, occasionally Patrick will just come up with a gem, a piece of gold, and then. Uh, It'll be golden. Uh, Sorak says, drum session is the best, uh, most realistic drum app out there to record music with 30 different drum sets. It's not an AUV3. Ah, oh, okay. So it's not an AUV3 drum session. I, I haven't I haven't played with it. Um, maybe Jade or, or one of the other uh, iOS app gurus can, uh, can help you out with that. All right. So let's talk about... <laughs> Let's talk about microphones and what you need to consider when you are selecting and using a microphone with your GarageBand or any other DAW for that matter. We're going to go through a bunch of different sections. I'm going to make sure there's time stamps down in the description afterwards so that you can check all that stuff out. The first thing I'm going to send you towards is the studio gear guide that I've put together. So if you go to studiolivetoday.com slash gear, what you'll find here is all of my gear. So I've got at the top here my mobile setup. So that's everything I use for my mobile studio, everything I use for my desktop studio, the master list of all the gear. And then if you scroll on down, here are all the mics that I use and recommend both XLR and USB. And we'll explain what all this means afterwards. But if you want to jump over there now and uh, you want to check out what my recommendations are, you can do exactly that. And these are affiliate links, which means if you do use any of that gear or you do use those links, they will break off a small chunk and send it my way. So uh, thank you for that. So first of all, what is a microphone? I know that sounds like a silly question, but a microphone is a way to capture audio. It captures analog audio and then it sends it as an analog audio signal. 
usually via what is called an XLR cable. And we'll talk about the difference between different types of microphones in a moment. But your standard microphone will be something like this. This is a dynamic microphone, the AKG D5, one of my recommendations. You'll plug an XLR connection, and then the other end goes into your gear. So whether that gear is a mixer, an audio interface, or anything else that accepts a XLR plug, that is how you get stuff into your digital audio workstation and into GarageBand or whatever else you're using. Now, there's other options as well, which we'll talk about in a moment. Before we go into the details of that, let's keep one thing in mind. You can record using just the built-in sound in your iPhone or your iPad. So if you've got an iPhone or an iPad, you can use your built-in mic. If you're using a laptop, they have microphones. And you would be surprised these days, especially like the Apple microphones, they've got like these studio quality, not really studio quality, but they're pretty good microphones that you can record. And even a PC laptop, you can record using your built-in mic. Now, keep in mind, and we'll talk more about this later, the one thing you wanna make sure you do whenever you're recording is use headphones because there's something called microphone bleed. And what that means is that if you are recording something, find the first thing you're recording. As soon as you record a second thing and you're playing back the first thing, guess what? Whatever sort of microphone you're using, if you're playing it back over speakers or even your inbuilt speaker in your device, it's gonna pick that up. You don't want that. So keep that in mind. Built-in audio is one option. Another option for a microphone that's often overlooked by folks is uh, just using your little dirty buds. Uh, using the earbuds that came with your iPhone or your iPad or just some sort of headset that has either you know a lightning connection if you're on your phone or your iPad or uses a three and a half mil TRRS connection. So that will give you the benefit of having built-in headphones and a microphone. And some of my audio that I've recorded, I literally put these buds in, plug this in and record through this. So if you've heard some of my songs, a lot of the backing vocals I do, I'll actually record on this. I'll just go into my cupboard there, plug in these Apple earbuds and then record using their built-in microphone. And that way you're monitoring the audio through the headphones, you're not getting as much mic bleed and you're recording. And you might think, how can something that small pick up decent quality audio? Well, you'd be surprised. So before you go, you this is why I'm a terrible salesperson. Before you go out and start spending money, look at what you have around you and start creating with what you have. Always create with what you've got right now. All right, let's go into the next phase. Once you've worked out, actually, I don't want to use the built-in mic. I want to use a more professional microphone. There's a couple of options, and we're going to talk about that now. What you want to first decide is, do you want to go with a USB microphone or an audio interface that you can plug any XLR microphone into. Now, USB microphones have been around for a while and they're improving all the time. My favorite, my go-to mic is still this little tacker. It's the Samson Meteor. And look how cute this dude is. Yeah, he's got the little legs. It always reminds me of a, a Star Wars droid, this one. But got the little legs there. You've got your microphone there. It's a large diaphragm condenser microphone. It plugs in via a little mini USB jack there. You've got a headphone jack. Remember why I said that was important? You need to be able to monitor your audio through headphones. You've got a headphone jack. You've got a mute button on this sucker and a volume control there. So this is my go-to microphone for USB. And the reason is it's pretty cost-effective. If we jump over to the gear guide that we were looking at before here and you come down to these ones microphones usb it is this one here the samson meteor and if we click here and take a look at what this sucker costs uh 69.99 so it's a $70 microphone, and it is, you can't really tell here, but it's quite weighty, and it's actually a decent quality microphone for what you get there. And you can plug that directly into your Mac or your PC. Now, if you're going into a device like an iPhone or an iPad, there is something else that you'll need with your USB microphone, and we'll talk about this now. If you've got yourself a Lightning-based iPad or iPhone, you'll need this one. Say it with me, folks. The Lightning to USB 3 adapter. This is... The the most important piece of kit for anyone connecting stuff using a lightning based device. So this is over on the gear guide, check it out. It's not cheap, it's about 40 bucks, but you'll buy it once. I bought this one about three years ago and it's been running well ever since. If you're using an USB-C based iPad or iPhone, you will need to get yourself something like this. This is from Atola. And again, this is over on the gear guide. This is the Atola USB-C to USB and HDMI. So this is actually super handy. 
I use one of these to actually send out my HDMI signal. So for later, when we're looking at things here in on the iPad, this is what I actually use. I have one of these plugged in and it means I can plug in my USB audio interface or I could use a USB uh, microphone and I can actually plug in my, uh, my HDMI so that I can view it on a bigger screen at the same time or capture the audio. This one's even got VGA, that's how old school it is. So there's a bunch of cool things. If you've got USB-C, that's the sort of thing you will need. So USB microphones are one way to go. The drawback of a USB microphone is that once you get that one microphone, that's it. You're stuck with that one mic. And look, if, if you're just recording, say, singer-songwriter or acoustic or vocals or whatever, that may be good enough for you. But if you want to be able to upgrade your microphone in the future, you will want to consider an audio interface. Now, the audio interfaces that I use and recommend, again, if you jump over to the gear guide over here, uh, you'll see here that my audio interfaces of recommendation are the Steinberg, the Focusrite, and the iRig. So this one here is probably my go-to these days, the iRig Pro Duo IO, or there's also the iRig Pro IO. These are both great little interfaces. They've got the ability to plug in microphones as well as guitars or instruments or stereo line inputs in the case of these stereo models. And they're just a really good handy interface to have around. You can also get yourself more of a desktop style one now the only box i could find handy was this one i don't actually recommend this if you're going to go behringer go the hd series this is the old behringer um2 i'm just showing you this because this is the cheapest interface you can pick these up for about 30 or 40 dollars but yeah you probably want to go with the steinberg or a focus right uh, interface if you're going for an audio interface as well the, the desktop versus mobile. So uh, whether you're using a mobile device, you will need to have your devices here, one of these or one of these. Uh, if you're using desktop, you just need to plug straight in. The other thing to consider with mobile is you may also need a powered USB hub. So if you're using an iPhone, you'll almost definitely need additional power. Once again, if you jump over to the gear guide and you go to the mobile get setup up the top here, I've got some options here. So the 10 DAC powered USB hub is still the best value in my opinion. It's less than 20 bucks. It's got four ports. You can plug it in. It's USB 3.0 and it just works. I've been using mine. It's still sitting here. It's powering my iPad Pro right now. It is the best value powered USB hub. And even if you are, even if you're using um, even if you're using an iPad Pro or something else, having a powered hub or even a Mac or a PC, I've found a powered hub just gives you more reliability and it can give you more consistent power going through to your devices. So keep that in mind. Uh, audio interface recommendations. As I said before, the things you want to keep in mind is the quality. So the reason I showed you this one before is this is only a 16-bit interface and they won't actually tell you that but I know it, and uh, if it doesn't say 24-bit or 32-bit, it's 16-bit. So my recommendation when you're getting an audio interface for your microphones is to get something with 24-bit audio. Make sure it's got 48-volt phantom power so that when you're using something like a, a condenser microphone that we're looking at in a moment, that you have enough power for providing that. And then the other things are really down to how much you want to spend and what function and what uh, details, uh, what features you need. So for me, the most important thing is to have good quality microphone preamps. So that's why the Steinberg and the Focusrite both have great preamps. Good quality audio to uh, analog to digital converters because the other thing that your audio interface is doing is taking your analog signal and converting it into a digital signal that your computer can understand into ones and zeros. The better quality of the converter, the better quality of the audio you're to get from your microphone so that's why something like the iRig Pro Duo that has 24-bit 24-bit uh, converters in there 24-bit uh, audio is going to give you a better sound it's got good quality preamps and good quality converters and this one is great because it comes with all the cables you need so what I was saying before about all those adapters you don't actually need that you don't even need one of these if you're using a lightning based device because it comes with a lightning cable in the box so that's an added benefit and advantage there uh, let's talk about xlr microphone types so there are two main types of microphones that you'll want to consider one is the good old dynamic microphone so anything like a shore sm58 shore sm57 akg d5 anything that doesn't require phantom power 
is going to be a dynamic microphone. They're usually handheld like this one. And these are good because you can plug this into an amp, you can plug it into an audio interface, to a mixer, anything at all, it doesn't require power. Now, that also means that it doesn't pick up as much audio. So if you're looking at really quiet sources, so really quiet vocal or very quiet fingerstyle guitar, sometimes these aren't going to pick up enough audio. But the benefit is they also reject a lot of background audio. So if you've got hiss, if you've got background audio, a dynamic microphone is going to be a great option for you. The other option, if we swing in from around here, is a condenser microphone. And this is my go-to condenser. This is the Audio-Technica AT2020, which you can't really see. Bring it over here. There it is, the Audio-Technica AT2020. So this is a side address condenser microphone. Both of these, both the uh, the AKG and this one, the Audio-Technica, are around the $100 mark US. So they're not super cheap. I would always recommend that middle of the range is a great place to start. Cheaper microphones, those $30 packs that you get on Amazon or eBay, yeah, the quality is not going to be that much better than your built-in audio, to be honest. I've actually heard people getting better audio from their phone than from some of those $30 condenser mics because they don't have great noise rejection, which means you're going to get hissy background noise and the capsules in them are not, not super high quality. So you, they're not going to pick up great crystal clear quality sound. This thing, the AT2020, is exactly what you need. If you, if you wanted to buy one microphone, if, you, if you're in the market for a mic and you have nothing, I would go the AT2020 because it's the most versatile microphone. If you've got a loud sound, you just have to get off it a little bit. Make sure your input gain is set down on your audio interface. But um, yeah, it, it is the, the way to go. The only drawback of a condenser mic is that noise. So if you've got a very noisy environment, that's where something like a dynamic mic like the AKG or a Shure SM57 or 58 comes into its own. USB mic recommendations. Well, I talked about the Samson before. There are some other USB microphones that I would recommend. Uh, the, the classic, the standard, the thing you've seen on every YouTube and Twitch streamer in the world is the Blue Yeti. And there's a reason for that. It's a great quality and a good value microphone. It does a lot of good things. It is, uh, it is out of stock. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was looking for the, uh, I need to need to update my links here for the Blue Yeti. There you go. Memo to self, update Blue Yeti links. Uh, but there it is. So $129, the Blue Yeti condenser microphone. There's also the Nano version. There's the X version. There's a lot of things. But when it comes to microphones, there's really only, uh, for USB microphones, there's a couple of things that you need to keep in mind. The two essential things are to make sure that it has a headphone jack and that it has adjustable volume or input control because some cheaper USB microphones don't have the ability to adjust your gain and they don't have the ability to have a headphone jack. So no headphones plugged in. And the problem with that is it's fine if you're using it on a Mac or a PC where say you're using a sound card or you're using something else to output the audio. But if you need that microphone, that USB microphone to be everything, to be the input and the output of your device, then you need to make sure that it has a headphone jack. So that's a, a good option there. There's also things like the AKG Lyra. You can see in my background there, I've got an AKG Lyra over there. Again, just, just check on those things. Check the reviews, check the ratings, and make sure they have a headphone jack. That's the absolute fundamentally important thing. All right, a couple more things to talk about here. iOS microphones. You may have known that there are little things like this from Shaw, the MV88. So this is actually a lightning-based microphone. You can see there it's got a little lightning connector. This one I've got, I bought a dead cat windshield for, and this is actually an amazing microphone for video. This is a terrible microphone for audio, as in for music. Great for audio for videos. So when I'm out and about and I'm recording videos, I grab this, I plug it directly into the lightning port of my phone, I put its little dead cat windshield on the top, and then it has great sound quality and excellent wind rejection because wind noise ruins an outside recording. However, you do want to, uh, to keep in mind that if you're recording music, lightning-based microphones, especially this one that has no headphone jack, for reasons we talked about before, are not going to be your best value. There is the MV88 Plus, which does have a headphone jack, but again, these are small diaphragm condenser microphones. They are great for video, audio. They are not great for music. So if you're recording music, steer away from those light. And the other thing about lightning-based stuff is as soon as you move to an iPad that's got USB-C, 
then you're not going to be able to use it. There's no way to adapt. Apple don't make it easy for Lightning to be adapted to something else. So if you've got a Lightning-based product, I would not recommend buying pure Lightning-based products uh, these days. Uh, other microphone types, you might be thinking, are there any other microphone types I should consider? There are. There's things like ribbon microphones. Now, ribbon microphones are very good, very high quality, very good sounding, very easy to break. So they don't take phantom power. And unfortunately, if you put phantom power through them or you put a too loud noise up against them, they can break easily. Now, in the home studio world, not many folks are looking for ribbon microphones, mainly because a good quality ribbon microphone is going to cost you $500 plus. So if you want to learn more about ribbon microphones, uh, there's plenty of channels. Joe Gilder over at Home Studio Corner, Graham Cochran. Uh, there's a heap of people that have talked about ribbon mics. I don't use them. Uh, I, don't, I can't afford them. And if you can, more power to you. But uh, we don't uh, we don't talk about ribbons. No, no, no. Uh, the other thing is you might have noticed shotgun mics or on-camera mics. They're great, again, for doing video shoots and for doing sort of long-range audio if you want to get good quality audio for video. If you're creating music in GarageBand or in other platforms, not really something that you want to go with a shotgun mic. Some people use them, especially for drums or drum overheads or things, and get good results. If you do, more power to you. But a good, again, a good quality shotgun mic is going to set you back $200 to $300, whereas the equivalent sort of uh, dynamic or condenser is only going to be around the $1 to $150 mark. So just wanted to mention those. Coming on to the homeward stretch here, microphone accessories. Before you buy a microphone or when you're buying a microphone, you want to consider these things. You want to make sure that you've got something to reduce your plosives, your popping peas. You'll notice I've got the little, uh, little rain hood on this sucker here. So I'm using the what I call a fuzzy wuzzy. Probably not the technical name for it, but yeah, grab yourself a fuzzy wuzzy, if you're, especially if you're using something like a, a dynamic microphone. It just means that when you're getting in there and belting out those rock vocals, you're going to uh, be able to reject some of those p -p -p and s -s -s sounds. If you're using a condenser microphone, guess what you want? Yeah, you want one of these suckers. You want a badminton racket. No, you don't. You want a pop filter. <laughs> You want to be able to filter out. Now, this is a, a double layer mesh one. This is just like the stocking type material. So these are actually absolutely fine. These are about 10 bucks. You can see them over on the gear guide and they work a treat. They've just got a clamp here. They've got a gooseneck there. So you can put them in whatever position you need. You attach this to your mic stand and then you put this in front of your face and it, uh, it helps block your plosives even more you can actually use. So that is the uh, that is a pop filter. That is an essential piece of kit. The other thing is a mic stand. So you will need a mic stand. Now, I recommend, as much as I would love you to use my gear guide and buy stuff there, if you can, because mic stands are heavy, the mic stands you buy online that can be sent for a reasonable amount of postage are usually no good. You want one that's got a heavy base because microphones, especially condenser mics, are bloody heavy. So what you tend to find is that they'll start bending down and falling over. And you know what you don't want in the middle of that face melting guitar solo? Your mic stand to fall over. So uh, get yourself a good quality mic stand. There's a lot of things you can skimp on. Like don't go and buy a $50 pop filter, buy a $10 pop filter and put that extra 50 into a good quality mic stand because the cheaper ones on uh, on eBay and Amazon, the $20 ones, yeah, they're, they're so flimsy. They just do not stand up. They do not stand the test of time. You'll have to end up like me putting sandbags and dumbbells on your, on your, your microphone stand legs just to make sure that they stay up. The final thing I want to talk about is microphone recording tips. So there's a few things to keep in mind with a microphone. What you'll probably notice here is that when I'm talking on my mic, I'm not talking into the microphone. A lot of people think you need to eat the microphone, but this does a couple of things. You'll notice that you're getting a lot more of that sort of sibilance and, pro and pee, popping pee sounds when I'm right up here on the microphone. So it sounds a lot less natural. And you also get uh, you also get a much lower sound uh, if, you, if you're too close up to the microphone. And so what, what a lot of radio DJs use, they get right up on the microphone. That's the proximity effect. So if you're too close to something, something, the proximity effect means that it's not, it's just, it's picking up more of the bass frequency. So if you, if you want to do a Barry White, uh, my darling, uh, then yeah, get up on it. But most of the time you want to be back a little bit. And that's the same whether you're using a handheld or a condenser microphone. The other thing is to, again, make sure that you're sort of talking or speaking over the top of the microphone, as opposed to directly down into it. You don't need to be talking into a microphone. You kind of just need to be talking next to a microphone. And you would have heard that when people talk directly into a microphone, 
microphone, you get that really bad sound. You get that distortion and you get that bad sound and that's where you can get some problems. Uh, feedback's not a real big issue when it comes to recording because unless you're playing back the audio through speakers, you won't get feedback. So again, make sure that you're using decent quality headphones or some sort of headphones at all. So for, for recording with a microphone like this, you'll need to have an audio interface that has a headphone jack that you can plug headphones into. If you are using speakers, if you insist on it, make sure that you are pointing the microphone, the back of the microphone, directly towards where the sound's coming from. That will reject as much of that noise. So for me, if I'm sitting here, my, my monitor speakers are down here and here, and if sound is blasting at me, this microphone is actually pretty good because it's going to reject a lot of that noise. So just make sure that if you do have background noise, you're pointing the back of your microphone towards the noise, and that way you're going to reject as much of that as possible. And just try to be in the quietest possible place. The reason I love mobile creating using your phone or your iPad or a laptop is you can just go. I've got a walk-in cupboard over there that I can go into that really reduces the amount of, uh, of background noise that I get or just get a long XLR cable. And then just, I used to do that as well. I used to have an XLR cable and I had like a, a vocal booth that I had in my, in my cupboard there. And I would just use like remote software or like something like Logic Remote for GarageBand and trigger it there and then just be singing in the other room. It's a great option if you want to reduce the noise. So there you go. Everything you wanted to know about microphones, but were afraid to ask. That is, oh, that was going to be a lot. All right, I'm going to have to go back because I know there were questions as we went along and I want to try and cover some of these. I'm going to have a drink of water here. I'll make sure. I'm going to drop my water all over my keyboard, apparently. That's all right. That's the, that's the best thing for it to go to. Uh, so Thomas Christ has been trying to figure out how to get HDMI out of an older iPad and still be able to use the USB audio interface. Jade mentioned a powered USB hub with HDMI out. Any suggestions that you have? Uh, Jade says the issue is that Lightning doesn't have bandwidth that USB-C has. You can really only send one or the other. Yeah, so... In all of my uh, in all of my research, and it looks like Jade's done the same thing. You can only get one or the other. So even if you use the uh, the lightning device, uh, this one. So uh, Apple sell this, and you can get cheap knockoff ones. So this is a lightning uh, HDMI which has a lightning plug as well as an HDMI. The problem with this is that they never give you USB. So there's no USB on this one for the lightning. And the reason they do that is you actually, you, it won't allow you to do that. So with an older iPad, so anything that uses lightning, you're kind of stuck if you want to export, if you want to sort of display the video at the same time as using it with USB audio, you just can't. Uh, and I haven't figured out a way to do it. It's why I used to use Reflector. Before I got the iPad Pro and I got the, the U, uh, HDMI capture card set up, I used to use Reflector because I had to use a software solution. So what Reflector allows you to do is what you have to do. It's a little bit finicky, but you have to, ex you have to set it up Get reflector running, then unplug and replug in so the uh, USB uh, into a lightning to USB adapter, and then you can actually use it, the USB audio while reflecting it via AirPlay and getting the audio coming through. Because the audio will default to the AirPlay, but then when you unplug and replug, it goes back to the USB. So in my experience, and I've I've checked in with a whole bunch of other people in the iOS community, there's just zero way of getting the uh, the the lightning, uh, sorry, the USB audio audio and HDMI out of a lightning iPad or out of an iPhone, which is a pain in the butt, totally. And yeah, that's why uh, why Apple went USB-C, which is, uh, is it. Uh, AT2020 is sounding awesome. Uh, yeah, AT2020 is good, exactly. I have a Behringer, but uh, kind of, it's kind of one trick pony. Yeah, the AT2020, uh, it, it's, it's just, it's the industry standard these days. Um, for for a condenser mic it just does and in fact speaking of mics mike from creative source did a comparison where he got a what did he use it was an at2020 and two others anyway two other more expensive ones and the at2020 won the blind shootout so uh it was very very cool uh, Dan Baker uses some kind of weird little stereo mic that plugs into iOS. Yeah. Um, it, it, so he uses the MV, no, he used the IQ7. 
So there's two options when it comes to lightning mics. And again, I wouldn't really recommend them these days because they're, they're, they're very much one trick ponies. Uh, but yeah, anything that got a lightning connection. So I, I originally actually tried the IQ7. I didn't like it. I couldn't get it to have good quality audio. I kept getting interference from other apps and things. So I actually sent it back. I don't return much stuff, but I returned the IQ7 and replaced it with the Zoom MV88. And it's actually really good. So if you've, uh, if you've seen some of the out and about, I mean, sometimes I'll just use, I'll literally use my headset microphone when I'm out and about. But um, yeah, if you've, if you've seen me doing videos where I'm walking around, I'll use the, the Shure MV88. And again, it's a stereo microphone too. So it picks up a nice sort of stereo field as well. Uh, yes, it was. It was the Zoom, the Zoom IQ7 that Dan uses. There you go. So you guys were solving all the questions you had. Uh, absolutely. This is a great tip. If you don't have, if you don't have a pop filter and you happen to have a stocking or pantyhose lying around, coat hanger, stretch any and look you could literally use a thin cotton t-shirt i've seen people with the coolest like, should do a competition who can make the coolest pop filter uh but yeah coat hanger wire coat hanger that you can actually sort of move around and then uh, yeah just just fashion it into my, my first very many songs and and sometimes when i break a pop filter and i don't have a replacement and i have to go buy one i'll just mock up one with some sort of cheap uh chucks as well if you use here in australia they're called chucks i don't know if they're called that in other parts of the world but those um those sort of cheesecloth kind of wipes not the not the big thick spongy ones but you know those thin stripy wipes that you get that you use to wipe down your kitchen or your bathroom they work a treat too in a, in a pinch any port in a storm any pop filter in a pinch that's what i say uh james says i have the pd 70 boom mic cool hope it works well for you uh do, 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 do. the uh chaotic eyeball thing looks really cool but stupid expensive certainly cheaper to make one from uh, a ball and a cheap pop filter oh, I, don't, I don't i have no idea what that is and i'll look into it further but uh probably not right now because uh, I'm, I'm already going to run long and i'm trying to keep things uh g'day andrew from bonnie scotland hope you are doing well i'm just going to scroll through here uh gregory uses a behringer sl sl 75c it's an sm57 knockoff works fine for vocals yeah look some of those uh, cheaper ones work absolutely fine uh expensive pete hello yeah brad remembers uh Remembers one of the, uh, the the spam emails I was talking about last week where it's like, dear expensive sir, we would like to give you this sponsorship of, who was it? Um, like Yves Saint Laurent, Pierre Cardin, Pierre Cardin, which is weird because he, here's the weirdest thing. This is why this is freaky. So would you believe that my backpack, you can't really see it here in the light, but it's actually a Pierre Cardin backpack. Like my, the, my just lugging around backpack. No, okay. Oh, here's on the front. There you go. Look at that. Pierre Cardin backpack. So the, the backpack that I use to lug my gear around and uh, do do my mobile creating is actually Pierre Cardin. So it's pretty funny that I get that. Now, why do I have a Pierre Cardin backpack? Um, basically, my frequent flyer points were about to expire. Uh, so I was a Qantas frequent flyer. I still am. I just haven't flown anywhere for two years. So my points were about to expire and I'm like, oh crap, I'm not flying anywhere. I'm not going to book any plane tickets. So I went online and I looked for backpacks and the Pierre Cardin were 50% off. So I got myself that Pierre Cardin back. And it's really cool. It's got like all the compartments and everything you need and the RFID protection and the headphone like pass through. Um, uh, and yeah, it was like 40 bucks because it was half price. So there you go. Speaking of things that you don't need to know. I know, right? Swanky. See, I am expensive, sir. <laughs> I'm totally expensive, sir. All right, we're going to crack on because we've got a few more things to talk about. Uh, luckily, uh, the, the last few things are not going to be that long, except the World Instruments, which I'm looking forward to playing with. Haven't played with the World Instruments in quite a while as I reach forward for my iPad. I need to buy a longer HDMI cable because my iPad's down here and it's really far away. It's hard to uh, hard to reach. Uh, the Chaotica eyeball is basically a hollow ball that you put a microphone in. And, oh, and it has a hole for a pop filter you insert. So it's, yeah, okay, yep, I've seen those. So sort of like those those portable vocal booth things. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I'm not I'm not a fan. I don't I don't think I need anything like that personally. We call it Pierre Cardboard in the UK. Nice. I like it. All right. Let's talk about, uh, we've got a rant of the week here. And um, my rant of the week is actually going to be, believe it or not, a uh, a, a book recommendation. Now, I, re I, I listen to a lot of podcasts, but I also read a lot. And um, there's an interesting story behind 
this. So I, I get a bit frustrated that my children, for those who have children, um, uh, they, they started like my, my oldest daughter is only 12 and she actually, I was stupidly, before I knew what TikTok was, I let her start using TikTok. And then I realized what TikTok was and I banned her and, and closed her down from TikTok. But now of course she watches YouTube and YouTube shorts have taken off. So she watches a lot of these YouTube shorts, which are basically TikToks anyway. Um, anyway, that's not the point. The point is that she said to me, oh dad, uh, can uh, I really want this book. Uh, can I buy this book? And I'm like, oh, what is it? She's like, oh, it's called, why has nobody told me this before? And it's by Dr. Julie Smith. And I'm like, a, who's that? What's that? And B, how do you know about it? And she's like, ah, oh, she does. She's really popular. She's really famous on YouTube and TikTok. And yeah, go figure. I go and look up Dr. Julie Smith. And in fact, let's let's jump over to her channel now because you may want. If you don't want to buy the book, you might want to just um, learn a little bit of her stuff. Because there she is, Dr. Julie. Two hundred and uh, what's that? Two hundred and eighty-six thousand subscribers. Uh, and yeah, she has these really sort of short form interesting videos all about mental health, all about coping with anxiety, coping with stress, depression, motivation, procrastination, helping other people dealing with these sort of things. And it is really, really cool. So uh, yeah, go and subscribe to her YouTube channel and follow her on all the platforms if you're interested. But uh, the the book that, uh, that I have now read is probably the best. So it was only released um, in January of this year. It's called Why Has Nobody Told Me This Before? And I pretty much think that every creator should read this because I read this and I sort of gobbled it up in about three days and there's so much useful information in there. But it's not... So if you've ever read self-help or you've ever read other things... Sorry, I don't have the screen showing, do I? Let's go back to the screen. There you go. Uh, if you've ever read self-help stuff before, it tends to go in two ways. It tends to either be so flowery and so patronizing that it's like, you can do it. Let's do a rah-rah chanting cantation every morning. Look in the mirror and say, I can do this 15 times. Like, and you know what? If that works for you, more power to you. And then there's the other side. There's there's people like Gary Vaynerchuk and there's like the, um, the um, what is it? The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F by, uh, by Mark, I forgot his surname. Uh, which are good, but they're like very direct. They're just like, you just got to do this. And there's a, yeah, only one way to do things. Don't let people mess you around. This is somewhere in between. This is really practical advice and information. And like I say, I think it kind of needs to be mandatory reader for reading for not only everyone, but definitely for creators. And it uh, looks like I can pick it up there for you know, about 18 bucks, $11 on Kindle. I'm an Audible listener. So I uh, I checked that. Uh, I, I got the audio book, which was very cool. But here, look, I'll, uh, I'll create. This is how I create um, affiliate links. I'll create an affiliate link and I'll chuck it here in the chat and I'll put it in the description as well. So if anyone is interested in that, um, yeah, take it from me. I've, I've read a lot of this stuff and I've done the research and uh, for, for anyone who's a creator and who struggles with things like motivation, struggles with, with energy, struggles with mental health and getting things done, this to me is a great read. Just really practical, really useful advice for 2022 and the, uh, the slippery slopes that we are all navigating on a daily basis. Uh, let's, uh, let's continue on to our next section, which is our plugin or app of the week. And I'm not going to spend much time on this because we've only got 15 minutes and I want to dive into these world instruments. But, uh, what I wanted to make the plugin or app of the week is BandLab. Yeah. So if you've never used BandLab before, it is actually pretty amazing. I, I didn't really know until I started using, I didn't know what it was. And full disclosure, We've got four, as I mentioned at the start of the show, we've got four sponsored BandLab videos coming up here on the channel this month. I've got a live stream tomorrow on my Patreon channel, all about BandLab, and we're going to be learning it all together. So if you want to, uh, I assume that because I've signed up here as Pete Johns and I'm at Pete Johns, you can probably find me. So if you do want to follow me, can, is, there, is there a way to like invite someone? What if I click on this? See, I'm, I'm learning this as I go. Yeah, look at that. I'm BandLab.com slash Pete Johns. So I'll, uh, I'll throw this in the chat here and I'll put it in the description as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm assuming if you sign up to BandLab, and it's pretty simple, it, like most things, you just sign up for an account and it's free to sign up and then you can start exploring things. And here's the cool thing, whatever platform you're in, as soon as you hit this red create button in the corner, you're into a DAW in your browser. So here we'll hit create and we'll dive in on this. We'll do it live, which usually means things are going to end badly <laughs> when we try things live. 
But look at this. It's like a cut down version of Cakewalk by BandLab to the point where it even uses a lot of the same stuff. So you can jump in here. You've got uh, MIDI instruments. You can record your own voice over uh, your microphone. You can record guitar. You can plug in. There's a sampler. There's bass. There's drum machines. There's all sorts of stuff. So if we grab like, the MIDI instruments here, you can actually just come in here and select any sort of instrument. And again, if you these will be very familiar to you uh, if you've used and I, and I mentioned before, the, the guitar sounds in here are actually a lot better than GarageBand. Sorry, GarageBand, but... Let's see if we can uh, get some audio. And the cool thing is you can just start straight away. So you'll see here you've got the... Um, we'll go up an octave or two. Uh, so you've just got the ability to use your typing keyboard. You can plug in a MIDI keyboard. You can see here you can drag or drop audio and MIDI files directly into here. It kind of does everything. Look at that. Yeah, if I plug, plug in a MIDI device, it's right there and it's ready to go. And there's a whole bunch. You've got all your different um, percussion. You've got all the different um, like wind instruments and string instruments. There's quite a lot of cool stuff in here. Like it's not a huge, like here's a sitar. And recording couldn't be easier. You literally just hit the record button. You get a metronome. Then hit it again. And it's all within your browser. It's actually pretty darn cool. And uh, I'm really looking forward to playing around with this and learning it. As you can see, I don't really know what I'm doing here yet, but, but you can see you've got full editing capabilities here. You can move things around. You've got the ability to quantize. So if you're not on the beat, which I'm not there, let's quantize it to an eighth note. Hit the quantize button. And uh, yeah, it's... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to playing around with this. And the cool thing is, because it's all in the cloud, as soon as you're done with it, you save it, it's available on your iPad or your iPhone. So we'll be able to create stuff here in the studio and then I'll be able to jump out and start playing around with it. And like, there's, there's a whole lot more here. It's not, obviously not just the instruments, but there's a whole bunch of other stuff that you can add here. I just haven't worked out how to do it yet. <laughs> <laughs> and I keep right-clicking things. There you go, add track. So yeah, so you've got instruments, you can record your audio as well, and there's a heap of, uh, of different loops. So you can import audio and video as well, uh, audio and MIDI there as well. But yeah, you can actually capture your, your sound here. So your voice and audio, we could actually record here. Do you want to use a microphone? Yep, allow it. Uh, let's, this is probably going to ruin things because it'll, uh, it'll probably think that we're using the same thing. Um, yeah, I've got, I've got to learn how to use it. But that's okay. Uh, there's a whole bunch of effects that you can add in here. So there's a heap of different effects. Look at all this stuff. <laughs> there's a heap of cool things there. So uh, join me as we learn together with Band Lab. And uh, again, the, the other benefit is that it is it is very much about uh, collaborating. So you can actually invite people into the projects and you can all be working on the same project at once. So someone's working out uh, a drum part and someone else wants to come in and lay some guitars over the top. You can do that. There you go. Uh, and yeah, Brad Example. Brad's been one of the folks who's been uh, who's been telling me about this for a while. So I go check out Brad Example. In fact, let's let's see if we can live. What, what have we got? Yeah, we still got ten minutes. Let's have a quick live look in and see. Uh, I'm I'm just going to hit don't save on the change of that one. Uh, but let's see if I can find Brad. So if I just go in here, I'm pretty sure he would just be Brad Example. Oh, there he is. So let's go in and see what we've got here. I'm sure Brad won't mind me doing this. So there you go. So here is someone that's actually got some. So I'm going to follow Brad. There you go. There you go. Look, he's got 2,800 followers there. Uh, he's got posts in there of his work. He's got, oh, look at that. That's where he was this indie spotlight on uh, on Ron's show. Very, very cool stuff. And you can start listening to Brad's tracks here. Look, there's his tracks on BandLab. Boom. You can go in there and listen to a bunch of Brad examples. So I'm excited. I'm looking forward to this. So uh, again, follow Brad as well. There you go. What is he? He's at Brad Example over there on uh, on. On the band lab, and uh, yeah, I look forward to that. Uh, and we'll bring you a bunch of band lab content over the next month. Should be a heap of fun. I like new things. I like new things, but I like simple things. And band lab seems to give you new and interesting, but it holds your hand, and it seems to be a pretty easy way to do it at the same time. All right, 
Last but not least that we're looking at here, by the way, today we're brought to you by the Gear Guide. So uh, if you uh, weren't around for the microphone section, jump over to studiolivetoday.com slash gear. If you're in the market for new gear, if you want a new microphone or just a pop filter or you're buying a new audio interface or you're buying a whole freaking iPad, I don't care. Use the Gear Guide there. Use the links up the top there, even if you're buying something else. Uh, so it, it, anything that you want to buy, uh, go in through these links at the top here. And even if it's something I don't recommend that you just want, then uh, go ahead and use the Amazon links, Sweetwater, eBay, or Thoman. If you're in the UK or Europe, that will help out the channel. And uh, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Those are affiliate links, so I do have to say this. Some folks won't always tell you this, but uh, yeah, they're affiliate links, which means if you make a purchase using those links, they will break off a small chunk and send it my way. Full disclosure. All right, let's jump into, we have not touched the iPad. We have been here messing about, pissy pantsing about for how long? And we have not jumped onto the iPad. So let's rectify that. Let's uh, finish off by having some fun. Let's look at world instruments in GarageBand. So I'm going to create a new song. Now, if you haven't used the world instruments before because they're a bit overwhelming, I'm going to give you some cool tips here that are going to help you get started. So the first thing you do is create a new song and choose your world instrument. We've got the Pipa, we've got the Erhu, the Koto, and the Gu Zhang. I'm going to give you a crash course in all four. Let's start with the Pipa. So this is a very, very cool instrument if we uh, tap on here. And you can see here it's set to the major pentatonic scale. Now you can change that. It does sound best in the pentatonic scale, but if you want it to just be a major scale there... You can do that. I think it sounds best in the major pentatonic. Now, you can just hit the notes here and record that. You can use the chords mode here, which uh, you can just swipe up to get that. Back here in the notes view, you can use this, which is like a repeater. Now, there's a name for it. I've forgotten what the name is, but if we hold down on a note and then we slide up here, I'll do it. You won't be able to see it, but I'm going to hold my finger on this note and then I'm going to slide this up and see what happens. So I'm holding down the note. And that gives you that classic kind of pipa sound that you'd hear if you heard the real authentic instrument. And these are all very authentic uh, Asian instruments, by the way. Let's go back to the chords mode. We do, of course, have our autoplay. It's kind of hidden up the top here, but this is pretty cool. Once we turn autoplay on, take a listen to this. And is it the pipa that's called the Chinese banjo or something? It sounds very banjo-like. So uh, let's record something again. We'll, we'll do it here in, in A, and we'll build up a bit of a track here with these world instruments. Let's hit the record button and hit the A, and then... There you go, just a little four bar arrangement here that we've got working for us here. And like every other instrument, you can come out here and you can edit this to your heart's content, but we're just gonna leave it there with that. Let's jump to the next instrument, shall we? It is the Erhu. Now this is called the Chinese violin for reasons that you're gonna hear in a moment, because it sounds like this. And there's actually a guy that plays the Erhu as a busker here in Adelaide. He's very cool. I don't know his name, but he's very cool. Now, there's a couple of things that you can do here. You notice you've got a few different options down the bottom here. Let's see what each of these do. So we're going to hold down on this note here, and then we're going to press these buttons. So the first one here gives you that kind of on and off kind of sound there. We've then got the next one here. That gives you a trill. So as you hold down and you hit that one, you get a trill. This one, now this is actually called something. I, in my first video, I showed what it was called, but it's like the, it's called the horsehair something something. So uh, if we hold this one down here. <laughs> how cool is that? So it's like. Right. And then the uh, final one here. Is your vibrato. So if you're playing a part here, so if we're like. Sounds really cool, doesn't it? Of course, you've got your chords mode here as well. And you've got your autoplay. So let's just play an autoplay to go along with this one, shall we? We'll hit record and we'll hit the A.
Very cool. Uh, we'll turn those volumes down a bit. These are very loud instruments too, aren't they? We'll slide this one out and turn the volumes down. So we get the uh, pipa and the erhu. Let's grab our next instrument here, shall we? We'll hit the plus button and we'll jump in and we'll grab the koto. This is a Japanese instrument and this is epic. Take a listen to this. I feel like I'm about to go to a dream sequence in the, in the movies. So this one's pretty simple again. You can, you can touch the notes there. You've got your scale selection here. So it defaults to the Japanese scale because it is a Japanese instrument. But again, you can go, say, back to the major pentatonic if you want to. Now it really sounds like it's like, and then I wonder what it would be like if I ate 20 donuts. Right? <laughs> Uh, and down the bottom here, if we tap. Very cool. A lot of cool options there. You've got your chords mode here again. And we've got our autoplay. So let's uh, let's see what autoplay sounds like as we bring this one into this. One, two, thick -a -dick -a doo Very cool. So that is the uh, that is the Kocho. There is one final world instrument here that's a lot of fun, and that's the Guzang, which is a very similar sort of instrument to the Kocho. But you can do a lot of cool things. Like you notice there that I was sort of bending the strings. You can go up and down the string to kind of bend it as well. You've got similar sort of functions here. Very cool there. And you can actually use these. On this one, you can actually zoom in. So if you're finding that the interface is too hard, you can zoom in there and you've actually got two different sections here. So you can play the bottom section and the top section there. So it makes it a lot easier to play. And uh, again, we've got the chords mode here. And again, we've got the autoplay. Let's kick it. Yo. <laughs> Very cool. There you go. So we've got that. We've made ourselves a very cool little loop. Now, of course, we could we could edit this and we could change it. And we could adjust it. It's all MIDI. So in fact, let's uh, let's just come in here and if we wanted to uh, change this, so let's make the tempo a little bit faster. We've got full control over this. Tempo of one twenty three. Uh, we'll change the key signature. Let's bring it up a little bit. Maybe put it into F sharp major just for fun. And now. <laughs> We've created a cool song. Now, one final tip with these, you can actually access these another way. So if we hit the plus button here, instead of going through world instruments, if you come down here and you go to more sounds, you can actually go back to your main categories up the top here, scroll to the bottom and go to other. And you'll find that they are all right here in the other instrument. There is the Guzang, there's the Koto, they're all there. So if we grab, say, the Koto here, we can now play the Koto right here on a regular keyboard. So if you don't like those interfaces and you want to be able to play the Koto or play any of these instruments just using a keyboard interface, that is the way to do it. World instruments, how cool are they? Go in there, play with them, enjoy them here in Garage Band. We have almost finished on time. Who knew it? Yeah, a bit of a yee-haw kind of tune there, wasn't it? <laughs> Very weird. Uh, I found most Oriental music is D major. Well, there you go. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, I haven't used the goosing at all. I wonder why. It looks uh, calm and severe. Yeah, it is. It's very calm and serene indeed. Uh, we are... We are done. We are done here. Uh, but I do want to uh, thank everyone for being here. Thank you uh, to the moderators of this channel. Thank you to Thomas Christ, who does an epic job moderating on almost every single show that we have here. Thank you to Jade Star. Thank you to uh, Sion. Thank you to all of our other uh, excellent supporters and moderators that we have around the channel. Um, we've got to the, like I say, it, it is Band Lab Month. So even though it's not Garage Band related specifically, do join me. If you're not a patron, uh, please consider it. It's only $1 per month uh, and you can get all of the extra exclusive goodies, all the live streams and all the extra posts and the early access to a lot of the videos that we do around here. Uh, Omni Collective Creativity, hello to you. Try doing this with through the keyboard and copy and paste the autoplays to non-world instruments like the Hollywood Strings. <gasps> there you go. You could totally do that, couldn't you? 
you could you could paste it into like some really cool alchemy synth sounds and get some world instrument sounds in there. Uh, there you go. Yes, you can support the channel by joining the Patreon at uh, at patreon.com slash Pete Johns. And don't forget, if you're watching here live or even if you're not, uh, you know where you need to go? You need to jump over. He's about to start. Look at this. He's about to start his show. There are eight people waiting for you, Rock and Ronnie Ward. So uh, jump on over there here. I'll, I'll share it. Tell, tell Ron that Pete sent you. Go over there. Enjoy the rest of your uh, afternoon or evening or morning with Rockin' Ronnie Ward enjoying some uh, some cool tunes created by the community over there. Thank you, Gary Hubs. Thank you, ball boys, ball girls. Thank you, everyone, for being here on Garage Band Weekly. Hope you had fun. Hope you learned a thing or two. And we'll see you next time. Bye for now. Garage Band. Garage Band Weekly. Garage Band. Garage Band Weekly. Garage Band. Garage Band Weekly. Oh, yeah.